Hi guys, my name is Charles and I'm one of the surgeons at Southpaws. Uh, we had a request recently uh, that we review the differences between CT scan and MRI, particularly how it applies to veterinary patients. And so in this lecture, I am going to provide a quick review. And as always, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Now, grossly, CT scanners and MRIs can look fairly similar. On the right-hand side, we have the Southpaw CT scanner, which is a 16-slice Toshiba machine. On the left-hand side, there's an image that I downloaded from the inter internet of an MRI scanner. And the big difference between the MRI and the CT is the depth of the gantry. Our gantry is probably about five or 600 millimeters thick, whereas the gantry on an MRI can be up to a meter and a half to two meters thick. Now you can also have an open MRI scanner, which looks like this. The disadvantage of an open MRI is that generally they have low field permanent magnets. What a low field magnet means is that the resolution is gonna be lower and the CT scan times are gonna be much longer than with an electromagnet. Now I'm not an expert, but my understanding of how an MRI works is this, a very high magnetic field is applied to the patient. And what this does is that it causes all the protons uh, in water to align uh, symmetrically like this. And then a radio pulse is applied orthogonally. So that means that at a 90 degree angle, and it causes the protons to misalign. And then when they fall back into their straight alignment, they're gonna release a certain amount of energy depending on the type of tissue uh, and water density that's present. This is then analyzed on a computer and this is what produces the image. Now the difference with a CT scanner is that a CT actually uses conventional X-rays and what it does is that it takes multiple um, X-ray images as it spins around the patient like this, and then a computer uh, reconstructs that original image uh, using multiple projections uh, of the x-rays. Now this video is really dramatic in that it shows the inside of the gantry as the CT scanner is spinning. You can imagine this thing weighs several hundred kilograms and is spinning around between two to three revolutions per second has to be absolutely perfectly balanced. Now, the other interesting uh, factor is how the images get transmitted from the spinning gantry over to the housing. And the way that it works is that there's a radio transmitter within the spinning gantry and a radio receiver within the housing so that the images can be transferred in real time. And generally, with respect to the MRI, there are uh, several advantages. The big ones are that there's no ionizing radiation it's really good for soft tissue differentiation. You can produce images in three dimensions at one time so you don't have to reposition the patient. Although this advantage is relatively minor because with CT, we can create images which are half a millimeter uh, in any dimension, so half millimeter cubes, so that we can actually reconstruct them in three dimensions without um, repositioning the patient. And I'll show you uh, that a little bit later on. In MRI, you can also use different ex uh, echoes to um, highlight specific soft tissues. A really big advantage is that you don't need to use myelography in order to image the spinal cord and nerve roots, although we do thousands of, of myelographic CT scans and we haven't had any major issue. Um, and then in MRI, contrast agents are less likely uh, to cause um, uh, any side effects. Uh, or complications and, and allergic reactions. Now, disadvantages of the MRI are that it is relatively slow compared with CT scans. So in MRI, you can have scans taking um, 30 minutes per anatomic site, and this is compared with about 30 seconds with CT scan. Now, this isn't an issue really for our patients, but it can be claustrophobic for human patients. If you recall that long cylinder which is only about four or 500 millimeters in diameter and up to a meter and a half to two meters long, um, you can imagine that a human patient could feel quite claustrophobic in that setting. MRI is relatively limited availability in Melbourne, uh, particularly there 
are two scanners, one of which is a permanent magnet, so uh, is going to have those slower scans. The other one has, you know, somewhat of a waiting time uh, as far as getting access to it. Uh, MRIs are generally more expensive than CT scan, both in terms of the individual scans as well as uh, the cost of the actual equipment. A CT scanner uh, costs about a quarter of a million dollars to $300,000 for a new machine, whereas a new MRI can cost a million, million and a half, even up to $2 million. Disadvantage, a uh, big disadvantage of MRI is that metal can cause a severe artifact and can even uh, uh, be dangerous if you have migration of those implants. Now, just to review um, advantages of CT scans, the big one is that it is much faster than MRI. Uh, it's very highly available. There are probably half a dozen CT scanners, maybe even more, available in Melbourne. Uh, scans are less expensive, and also the equipment is less expensive. And the real highlight is when you use it for bone. We also really like it for assessing lung metastasis. You get crystal clear images of lung. You can image uh, lung metastases down to about a millimeter or two in diameter. It's also really good for detecting hemorrhage around the brain and in the abdomen. And uh, an advantage for people that don't look at a lot of um, uh, axial imaging uh, is that on CT, the structures, because we're using x-ray, the structures appear as they would on, on an x-ray. So it's easier to interpret if you're not used to looking at them. And what I mean by that is that bone is always going to be white, air is going to be black, soft tissue is going to be a shade of gray. Disadvantages of CT scan, the big one is ionizing radiation. Um, and a single CT scan is equivalent to about three to five years of background radiation, meaning if you're standing out um, uh, you know, outside or in your home or whatever, uh, you're gonna get um, uh, an equivalent amount of radiation in three to five years. Big disadvantage for looking at the spinal cord is that you do need myelography, although again, we have performed thousands of CT myelograms at South Falls and we haven't had any major issues, although about 10% of patients are going to have um, a seizure or two in the post-operative period. Uh, the contract agent occasionally causes allergic reactions, although we've never really seen that in our practice. Now, with respect to sample images, um, because we have a CT scanner at our practice and we don't have MRI, I'm going to concentrate on CT um, uh, to demonstrate some of the capabilities. This is a nasal scan, and we can see that we can uh, visualize the nasal, nasal terminate, turbinates really, really nicely. And if you uh, do the, the uh, volume scans, which are scanned at half a millimeter in all dimensions, you can re-slice this in either a coronal or a sagittal scan and, again, get really, really good uh, uh, spatial uh, realization in three dimensions. This is a sagittal reconstruction of a dog with a cranial mediastinal mass, and we can see the uh, mass sitting here in the cranial mediastinum just in front of the heart. We can very clearly visualize the aorta and the great vessels coming up rostral or cranially. Um, we can see the, uh, the heart with the left ventricle sitting here, the right ventricle sitting down here, and we can see the vessels within the liver um, or the uh, parenchyma of the liver and the vessels within the liver as well. And was performed, this scan was performed in um, uh, volume scans, so half a millimeter slices in all directions. And what we can do is do a multiplanar reconstruction, which allows us to look at um, all three orthogonal views at the same time. And so in this patient, we have our sagittal scan right here, and we can see the sacrum um, really clearly as well as the, uh, as the pelvis. Um, looking at our axial reconstruction, we can see the wings of the ilium right here and um, the um, seventh lumbar vertebrae or the sacrum here. And then in the coronal view, we can also see the femoral shafts and the pubis here. Another ni nice thing that we can do with CT that we can't do with MRI is 3D volume rendering. And what that does is the computer assigns soft tissue colors to different densities, and that allows us to see what looks almost like an anatomical specimen. So 
Uh, for example, here, uh, we've got a mass in the antibrachium here. We can see the ulna and the radius, the bones of the corpus, um, you know, the, the triceps muscle sitting here, biceps muscle, cephalic vein is sitting here. So really, really clear uh, anatomical um, uh, realization. And when you're doing surgical planning, particularly for cancer, it can be really helpful to get a three-dimensional assessment of what's going on. This is another 3D volume rendering of a patient with a maxillary mass that's at the um, uh, place where the zygomatic arch attaches to the maxilla. And again, for surgical planning, determining where the large blood vessels are going to be, um, it can be really helpful. And this last uh, slide just shows uh, three-dimensional volume rendering of a CT scan of an abdomen in a dog. And again, uh, to get these near picture-perfect anatomic um, visualization is really helpful, particularly with surgical planning. So that's my review of CT scan versus MRI. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And as always, please subscribe to our channel.